Okay, great. Um, hello, welcome to the third workshop. And I'm just going to hand it over to Stephen and Louise to get started. Cool. So today we're going to be introducing, uh, well, I mean, I guess we'll talk about who we are first. So Luis and I, we work on a project called Caught Up, and it's an Android, iOS, and web application. And we started off as Virginia Tech students. I mean, we're still Virginia Tech students. I'm a computer science major, and this is my last semester. Uh, and Luis? I'm a Virginia Tech uh, alumni, and I work full time. So Caught Up is an Android, iOS, and web application that finds overlapping free time between acquaintances, friends, and family. We found that most people use messengers to coordinate meetings, then individually, they save the events to their calendars to get reminded. And then in some instances, at the day of the event, the person would message the other person to remind them that, uh, to remind them about the event. So the basic idea of our application is that when you log in, log in, you can overlap your schedule with that of your friends, see when they are available, and then you can create an event to get shared reminders. Uh, so today we're going to talk about product management. Specifically, we'll be talking about our experience in making consistent progress towards our project. Uh, so as mentioned before, from our presentation, we talked about product design and covered brainstorming, idea, ideating, sketching, prototyping, and testing. Then we decided to talk a little bit about uh, building off our last presentation. Uh, we, discussed, uh, we discussed creating the initial product. We have like, for example, uh, our, our server logic, uh, which is our database management system, a web application, and a mobile application, which are separated into three repositories. Yep, so in order to manage these projects, um, we rely heavily on GitHub for code version control. And naturally, since we rely on, we use GitHub, we also rely on GitHub uh, software to keep track of other things. So such as uh, features and issues to address within the code. So like to start off, some useful repository files that we keep are what are called uh, a readme and a changelog. Change log. In the readme, we keep details like uh, what the project itself does or what the repository is, how to get the project running, and how to use it. And then the change log would sort of be like, you can imagine it as a journal where, where you keep track of what changes were, were made. And here we have like a snippet from one of our change logs. Yeah, and in the snippet, you can see we have, we always have the date and then we have like a quick overview of what changes were made on that day. And then you can see in blue, there's like a showcase a label. And these are actually links to YouTube videos of what the user interface looked like. Um, to quickly show at that date, what did it look like? And it's kind of neat that we can look back and see what the project looked like. So moving on. OK, so throughout the presentation, we're going to have our tips. And the first tip is you should make sure that it should work on other computers. So the whole idea of, uh, well, it works on my computer isn't very useful. Um, for example, when you're in a team, and you want to have your senior developer validate your code, you can't just be like, oh, well, it works on my computer. Uh, that's, that's really not useful to anyone. So make sure that you test it and make sure that it works in different environments. Yep. So we're going to walk through a short GitHub workshop over the next few slides. And this is the quick overview. We're going to create a repository with a readme file. We're going to create an issue to create a change log file. Uh, we're going to create the brand's name dev. Uh, we're going to create the change log, and then we're going to commit that change to dev and then merge it into master or the main branch, which master was renamed into main. And if you'd rather just pay attention to what we're doing, feel free to just watch. And then if you also aren't familiar with GitHub, there are a lot of tutorials out there that you can look up 
to which will get you started with GitHub. Uh, this is pretty much how we make changes to our project. So So let's say that you have a feature that needs to be added or a bug that should be fixed. So the idea is that you start coding, right? Well, not really. Uh, first, you need to sort of make a plan. And the best way in which we keep track of our plans for coding is to make an issue. Um, so basically, we want to make sure that we don't forget about what we're going to do and that it's we're able to share sort of this plan with other people. Mm -hmm. So on GitHub, if you go to the issues tab, you can see here that there are a list of things of open issues. We have 30 open issues. These are things that we still have to implement. And what's nice about this is it's also like a backlog uh, of things that you know are going to implement, but then also have been implemented. So we can look into why certain decisions were made or why, uh, and yeah. So for example, we have here an example of one of the issues from a project. Um, here you can see that it's assigned to myself. I created it. Uh, it's labeled as an enhancement. It's part of a specific milestone, which would be our minimal viable product. And for example, you can see here that I keep track of uh, sort of like what the project looks like. I keep notes of um, what is the intended goal. Something you can also add is like, for example, and the other projects, people tend to add like wireframes of what you want it to look like. Really depends, but you know, the more detailed, the better. And then you can see that people can continue the discussion. Like for example, here, uh, Steven mentioned me, uh, helped me with a comment about like uh, the specific cloud functions that the, the mobile app can do and sort of like to help me work on that. The good thing of here is like, uh, if you take advantage of additional GitHub features, you can sort of see all of these uh, issues in the bigger context. Like for example, you've taken advantage of uh, project boards and projects. You can see which uh, issues are currently to do or in progress or done. And you can sort of like even split them further into additional subtasks and like checklists. And every time you check off that uh, checklist, it like contributes to the progress of either the issue or the project in general. And it's, it really helps to keep track of the whole project and like to help people stay accountable. Yep. So this is also really similar to, um, I guess, the product called Kanban. Uh, and then Trello. Trello is also a Kanban board. It's good for managing uh, teams. Uh, so then next, we're going to be doing our workshop task. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a repository, and then we're going to create a readme file and create an issue in a change log. So if you guys would just like to follow along, you're going to hit create, and you're going to go to GitHub, you're going to click create a new repository. I'm assuming a lot of you guys already know how to do that. And then in the repository, name it whatever you want. So let's see, um, actually, SDC, and we'll call it. Uh, after you create a repository, I'm going to also make it public. And then you want to make sure that you click on uh, add a readme file. That way it will auto generate it for you. I'm going to hit create repository. And then we're going to is create an issue to create a change log. Um, we're going to do this all on the GitHub website. But of course, you know, if you're coding, you would do this on your local computer and then make the commit with uh, either GitHub desktop or via the terminal. But the entire workshop, we're going to be doing it online. So you're going to quickly go to the issues tab and then you can click on new issue to create an issue. And I'm going to call this uh, create change log, create the change log. Um, something I like to do is I always recopy it to the comment. And then you can also label changes uh, to make. So what's nice about issues is you can also use, these are also using markdown styling. So if I write an issue like this with specific uh, formatting, I can have a checkbox, right? 
I'm going to submit a new issue. And that's pretty much how you create an issue. That's something that I do whenever I think of something to implement to the, or something to add to the project. So I can get it off of my mind. Cool. So now that we're done with that, whoopsie. Uh, again, this is just a quick walkthrough if anyone had any questions. So I, I clicked on you, I created a repository. I made sure to check, add a readme file, clicked on issues, created an issue, uh, and submitted the issue. Uh, so now quickly, a uh, quick uh, summary of like what branches are. So the easiest way to understand them is like, um, so for example, here we have a network graph of our different branches, which are simply like different versions of a repository. So for example, here we see that the black line is the main or master branch. And then we can see that from there, we have certain uh, splits, which is blue line, which would be our dev branch and which we, um, we keep uh, different updates. And for example, from there, we can also split up additional feature branches in which we work for specific features uh, that we then later mer merge into dev that can later on be merged into master. Okay, so then for the next one, we're going to create a dev branch. So we're going to go back to the code page. And the reason why we make a dev branch is we want to leave main to be the deployed web application or the deployed app. So something that's deployable, something that's stable and yeah, ready. So I'm just going to type a name such as James Wan. And I'm going to click this to create the branch. And then in the branch, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, that's what happened. So in order to make good, so now that we have a separate branch to make contributions to, when you are making a contribution, you want to make sure that it's understandable. This goes for code or whatever other changes that you make. Uh, so something I like to do when I'm making a contribution is I like to add links to resources that I found really explains the section of code that I worked on. So if I implemented some unique algorithm that I found online, and I tested it. I would also add the link in the comment of the in comments near the code, so that anyone else who's reviewing it or uh, looking at it in the future, they can quickly go get an understanding of what that code does. Um, and you know, commenting URLs that isn't something to worry about because when you compile uh, projects into binaries, a lot of the or all of the code comments are stripped out of the code. I guess the, the only difference would be static websites because those don't strip out anything. Uh, also, you want to make commits in understandable chunks because when you're making commits to a real to a production product, the reviewers need to understand what's happening to catch any mistakes. So small commits are not anything to worry about. So here, this is like a small commit that I made. And I just commented out a sync button. And the reviewer can quickly see, oh, that's all he did. Nothing else could have possibly have broken because of this. And that's really useful. Which is basically our second tip of uh, writing that good code is maintainable code. Uh, we mentioned it in the previous presentation. We're mentioning it again. Uh, make sure that your code is maintainable. And sort of like when you're when you're documenting, um, make sure you you're elaborating like why are you doing certain things certain ways. Mm -hmm. So and then the last few things for the workshop task is we're going to create the change log. We're going to commit it to the dev branch, and then from the dev branch, we're going to merge it into the main branch. So here we are. I'm going to quickly add a file. I'm just going to, oh, how convenient change log. And I'm going to give it a title, change log. And then we like calling our section where we add stuff to journal. And there are multiple ways to design the change log. Uh, you can look up, look up uh, ways to do it online. Uh, but what we currently implement is we add the date, month, 
in day. And then we explained what we did. So we created change log. Created log that MD. Cool. And then we can make the commit message. And clicking this will just commit it to the change log branch, which is the feature branch. Cool. So after committing, it's not yet merged into the main branch. So we need to compare and just quickly merge it into the main branch. So when you create a pull request, as a quick aside, uh, this allows other people to review the code. But since it's just a project with me and I'm the only reviewer, when I create a pull request, I'm the only person who can see this. But after reviewing it, other people would have to um, indicate that it's good and then they would merge it for you. So now that the pull request is made, I'm just going to merge the pull request. And we're just merging directly into main because we didn't make a dev branch. But ideally you'd make a, oh, sorry. I, I see the discrepancy. So we called it dev branch in the presentation, but I, call, I made a feature branch instead called change log. Um, but yeah. The same principles apply. Um, typically, it's you create a dev branch, and then from the dev branch, you create a feature branch, which would be called change log. And then change log, you merge to dev. And then from dev, you may, if all the changes work and it's a stable release, you merge it into main. And then again, a walkthrough. If anyone has questions, we can go back to these slides. And what we did. What we, what we did was we created a change log branch, uh, a blue branch, and then we just merged it back into dev, uh, sorry, into main. Cool. So that's basically uh, for managing your code. However, uh, depending on the circumstances, you're more than likely to have uh, other types of files. So we're just going to go over an overview on how we deal with that. So as Steven mentioned, we're a business. So we we, we have a lot of different uh, documents and we try, try to, at least for our needs, separate them into these four distinct categories. We have concept dev, which is anything about features, design, market research, uh, product dev, where we keep uh, stuff like assets and icons and images and design notes, business dev, where we keep things like documents for events, social media, materials, plans, and finances. And then we have like the, our management folder where we keep track of things of like uh, who's currently on the team and different reports of our different of our meetings. Uh, here we have like a screenshot of one of our different uh, folders. Like for example, in business dev, we have an events folder where we document different uh, materials we have used and presentations for such events. Yep, and then you can see the last few events that we've had, the student developer club presentations were it, and we always have the date. And within those files, or within this folder, we have files regarding these events, uh, such as this presentation. Which leads to our next tip of putting dates on everything. It really helps you uh, keep track of everything, especially once you have like 100, 100 files, it makes it easier to like know what's relevant at the moment. Yep. OK. And then the last thing is managing team members, right? How do we keep them motivated? So we, we, we do a lot of meetings. Uh, well, we did weekly meetings, but then depending on the times, so if people are busy, we would, well, I mean, first, team meetings, we used to have longer meetings, like 30 minutes, but then eventually we shortened them to 10 minute meetings. Uh, so now our cap max length of a meeting is 10 minutes, but then we also record it for those that couldn't attend the meeting. And then we, when we have a busy week, uh, we often just turn into one-on-one -on -one meetings where I, who is in charge, would end up making sure that everyone's on the same page and we're all working to make good progress. Uh, so you have to be able to adapt to the changing times and figure out what works for you. Oh yeah. Right. So you have to try and you have to try things, figure out what works, and then when you find out what works, try and make incremental improvements uh, from time to time. 
going off of that, our final tip is the sum is greater than the, uh, than the parts. Basically, um, as long as you're making small incremental changes, you will notice that eventually you, you can lead to something that is much greater. Yeah, so I actually commit almost every day. And when I make these small commits, they are very meaningless. But when you look at the big picture, uh, it becomes this useful app. <laughs> so these were the presentations that we did. We did a product design presentation. And then after that, we talked about developing off of that design, uh, how to make a product. And then from that, from there, our final presentation, which was today, was just talking about how we consistently make progress on that project. Any questions, questions, comments, concerns? Um, <laughs> I have a, I have a question. Sure, go for it. So I know that um, sometimes uh, uh, people use other um, mm -hmm. platforms uh, to kind of substitute for um, the issues uh, feature on GitHub. Um, I kind of want to know uh, why you guys um, uh, kind of went with the the uh, the issues on GitHub over other platforms that might um, provide the same function. Okay, uh, Luis, do you have any insight on why we're using GitHub? Uh, like, well, like a natural thing. I don't know. It, it, like the first one would be like it's the most natural because it's already there. Uh, it's at least for us, it's just more. It's easier to just keep everything inside the same sort of environment. Like also with GitHub, you can set up certain rules. Uh, so like every time you make a commit, you can automatically update certain, uh, you can automatically move uh, one issue from uh, from like uh, to do to in progress. Or once yeah. you like close an issue, you can automatically, uh, it automatically changes your, uh, board. Yes, um, I, I do want to note that if you're, so something I didn't show was closing the issue, because I forgot. But if you add something like, I don't know if I edit this, it would work. But if you type like fixes, and then the issue number, I'm just kind of going to create a new tab. So change log issue number, oh, I guess it's issue number one. Where, do, where is it? If I put fixes, and then parentheses, issue one, update comment. Um, this actually links it to the issues. So if I click on the issue, it will say that this was the pull request that I made and it was called create change log two. Or sorry, yeah, that's the name of it. It actually links it together. So quickly I can see everything related to this issue. Um, and so if it's merged, I can quickly close the issue. So just because everything was like bundled together in a neat package, that I guess that's why we continued with GitHub. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. But there are other, uh, like, why don't we use Trello? Um, it's, uh, hmm. I think we should use Trello in the future for business side stuff, because currently we just keep track of who's doing what with, um, I guess it's basically memory, and then also Google Docs of our timeline, but yeah. yeah, for code, we use issues in GitHub. Okay, yep. that makes sense. Um, and then uh, what's the uh, difference? I, I kind of didn't understand um, mm -hmm. the point of the change log when uh, uh, I guess GitHub shows you um, already kind of your history, your code history. Ah, so, it depends on how good you make your commits, but then also, uh, um, Luis, do you have any insight as to why we continue keeping a change log? Uh, I, I know that one thing is you can copy and paste or quickly get an overview uh, from just looking at it. <laughs> yeah, so, so the change log is supposed to be a little bit of more meaningful okay. changes in, in the project. So like they're distinct, uh, like, achievements so, so for example the the commit history it's it's a little bit more cluttered 
for example, you if you like made a commit and then you realized, oh no, I made a mistake, and then you keep making multiple commits, that gets a little bit cluttered. So mm -hmm. the change log is a sort of a summarized, cleaner version of that. Yeah. So for example, like December, or sorry, not December, March fifteenth, uh, we talked about sync calendar update initial event. Available. I, I can't read initial event available friends, message swipe and delete leave group indicator these could have been like 10 or five or 10 commits and yeah instead we just have it in one line so it's easier to read more human friendly okay yeah. that makes and another thing to add is like would you see that there is like a showcase link uh, this is something we personally do but once we have like this meaningful uh change we record a small like 30 second video of what the product looks now after that meaningful change has done and we link it there. Yeah. Okay. All right. That clears stuff up for me. Yeah. Thanks. Any additional questions? If not, then I'm I'm assuming that's the end of the presentations. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have any more. Yep, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I I will